So today we're gonna address the elephant in the room and talk about the five biggest reasons why you're possibly failing these colossal bosses. Now, I get this question a lot. Your skills, how do you beat this boss, this boss? I've been on it all day. I've been trying to beat this boss and a lot of it has to do with these reasons I'm going to mention and hopefully by me addressing them and showing you different ways you guys can attack those issues, you can become a better player in the first ascending, especially for you newer players. Now, the number one reason most descendants are failing colossal bosses is because they're not doing their homework on each colossal. If you noticed on the left hand side for stunning beauty, this is the starting screen and it has a lot of really good information just right here. If you notice, it says attribute resistance. Now, this is the attributes that stunning beauty is resistant to. So for her, fire is strong, electricity is very strong, chill is normal, and then toxic is very weak. So if you were to pair that up with descendants, that would be who? Freyna would be the best bet to fight her, obviously, if you wanted to use toxic. Chill, Viesa would be the next best bet. The worst to use against her would be Bunny, because you wouldn't be able to really take advantage of any of Bunny's electricity or her skills to really take down Stunning Beauty. It would just be all damage. So that is just something for you guys to keep in mind. And that is another reason why having more than one descending is so key in this game. Now, if you notice under that, it says recommended attribution resistance, electric resistance 350. So this is something that I feel a lot of players don't pay attention to. This is the recommended attribute resistance your character should have on their build. How do you do that? Well, if you go to your modules and you look under where it says antibodies, you should have a few by now. You'll probably have cold antibody for chill, heat antibody for fire, electric antibody for electricity, and then obviously toxic antibody for toxic resistance. So if you guys are fighting a boss and it has any of those, you want to put the recommended amount. Now, the harder the boss and the further you go along, you're gonna notice that some of the recommended amounts are pretty high, and that's where you're going to have to enhance these modules. You have to go to Cilion, the module master in Albion, and then you'll look for, say I have toxic antibody, and you can see mine currently is at 2100. If I were to raise it up again, it'd be at 2600. So you're gonna have to do this with some of these, especially the further along you get in the colossal battles. Now to do this, you're gonna have to have two things. Your mastery rank is for every level, so if you have mastery rank level three, you can level up your, you can enhance your module up to three times. You're also gonna need Kuiper shards, and you're gonna need gold. So hopefully you've been leveling up your main descendant, and if you've unlocked another descendant you're leveling up that descendant because that's going to help you unlock mastery ranks a lot faster because remember when you level up your mastery rank you're gaining descendant module capacity and weapon module capacity and that's going to help you improve your overall build and essentially allow you to do more damage and we'll explain that in a second so now that you know where to add that resistance let's talk about what else this screen shows it shows you destructible parts now these destructible parts are going to obviously be weak points for you to aim at. There's also removable parts that you can remove from your descendants. Now, when you're shooting a removable part, it will slowly turn blue, and then once it turns yellow, you're able to grapple hook to that point, you can remove it, and then you can target that point to put out more damage to that weak point. So again, if you guys haven't really been taking advantage of all this information they tell you right before you go into a colossal battle, that is already one huge mistake. Let's talk about the next biggest mistake most players are doing. So damage, 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 damage seems to be the biggest issue what I've seen from players when they're in the first ascendance. And the reason why is because they are not modding their weapons right and they're not taking advantage of the extra damage that they could get without doing too much. And what is that? Well, if you look at our modules, there are a ton of modules you can use, right? Now, some of the easiest modules you guys can get and put on your build to help it do damage is the modules I'm about to show you. And all of these modules are normal modules that you can get early on in game. So I'm gonna tell you four that I would recommend. Number one being rifling reinforcement that's gonna give you that raw damage that you guys can put on it. Better concentration that's gonna help you hit critical hit damage. You have better insight that's gonna help fire on critical hit rate, so critical hit chance. And then obviously you have weak point sight, which is gonna give you extra damage to weak point. 
and you can run other mods. I have fire rate up here to increase my fire rate and target detection. But again, I've ran these same mods from start to finish and slowly have upgraded them. The same way you can enhance your modules that I showed you earlier, you can enhance your weapon modules too. So you can enhance your modules on your build and you can enhance your modules on your weapons. The next biggest thing is players going into colossal battles with under leveled weapons so if you have a weapon you really enjoy using but the level might be five but your current level on your max weapon you have on you is level 20 well you need to do the level transmission you could do this at the workbench you're going to need one material which is called a precise phase exchanger that you can make with liquid metal you get liquid metal by dismantling standard and rare weapons which you're going to have a ton of after a while and you'll need 50,000 gold to use the workbench and use the weapon level transmission, you'll need to be at least rank level three mastery, which is pretty easy to do, especially early on in the game. Now, remember, if you're trying to level up your mastery rank, the best way to do that is play with multiple descendants. Obviously, level your first one up, but then level up what other descendant you get unlocked. If you unlock Bunny second, we'll level her up too. And then if you unlock any other characters, continue to level them up. Also playing with different weapons, levels up your mastery rank plus every time you do a new mission in the campaign you'll gain mastery rank there too now the third biggest thing i see players do wrong is say they get to a level 40 colossal and then they decide to use a new character they just unlocked that's level 10. well that is a big no-no and the reason why is because you should take the time to level that character up to at least the same level it would be if it was your main character and you were just playing through the story the reason why is because every level from level one to level two to level three to level four, your max HP is going up, your max shield is going up, your max MP is going up, your defense is going up, your shield recovery out of combat goes up, your shield recovery in combat goes up, and your mastery rank XP goes up. Now, after 35 levels, that's going to be a big difference from a level one character to a level 35 character. So definitely have the right level for the colossal you're going into and that means have that new descendant that you might have selected that's level one it be on par with whatever your main character would be at so if your main character is currently in the story level at 25 well then you want to boost that new character to 25 so that way you can be on par to really be able to beat the colossal bosses so leveling up your new descendant before you go into a colossal boss is very very important and i see so many players trying to go into colossal bosses with very under level descendants and it's because they just got a new descendant like excited to use it take the time do a little bit of the xp farm i put out two videos and that new descendant is going to benefit from it and your teammates are going to benefit from you surviving our fourth biggest reason is survivability players not specking into the right stats so if you guys are struggling to survive I highly recommend you start looking for external components that have HP on them and have defense. Shield seems to be the worst stat to really focus on. So what you wanna do is really go for the ones that say max HP and then defense. I typically on my builds try to get more HP and then maybe have one external component that has defense. And that's kind of really worked for me, especially in the harder bosses. Now there are two modules that increase your HP and your defense. On this one, I've leveled it up and you can see I'm getting an additional 108% max HP. And then obviously you can put the one for increased defense will give you defense. And on this one, I have defense 39%. So if you guys are looking at having some type of survivability, highly recommend trying to fit these into your builds at some point because having defense and HP gives you that survivability you need. And the fifth and final reason I see people fell in these colossal bosses are the modules they're currently using on their descendant. They're not using optimal modules to help them hit harder with their skills. They're not taking advantage of this shock punch, where if you were to level this up, this can give you 10 extra module slots on your descendant. And that is a game changer because you know module slots become a very issue. So early in game, you really want to focus on some of these right here. 
And if you notice, I have a lot of blue normal modules on here. I just level them up as you can level them up as you go. But I didn't start off my first couple Colossals with maxed out mods. I slowly leveled them up as I progress through the story. And don't forget about your reactors when you're creating your descendants build, adding modules. The reactors are a very key part. If you notice right here, you wanna have the first one always checked. So this is, mine says machine gun weapon in class equipped. That means it just has to be on my character. Now, if it said mounted, that means I have to be holding it. So as long as I have a machine gun, one of the three main weapons that is on my descendant, I will be fine. I do not have to be holding it. The next thing you guys really wanna pay attention to is that skill power boost ratio. Of course, electric's gonna work good with Bunny, but do you know, if you go to your descendant, you can see what type of damage they do. I have two that are fusion, maximum power being one of them, and then I have two that are singular, which is lightning emission and then speed of light. So again, you have to decide which two skills you want to really heavily spec into. For bosses, for Bunny, I personally like maximum power, so that is a fusion. So I would rather have a reactor like the one I'm looking at right here that's giving me electric skill power, because that's all my skills, and then it gives me fusion skill power. And maximum power is fusion, and that works great against colossal bosses, and that is perfect for the way I wanna have my build set up for that. So those are things you really wanna pay attention to when you're selecting your reactor because this can be make or break to make your skills hit that much harder against those colossal bosses. So I honestly hope this video helps out some of you guys who have been asking me questions about, yo, skills, I'm struggling, my team's struggling, my friends are struggling. Hopefully, if you guys watch this video, you guys are one step closer to beating these bosses. Remember, there are mechanics to each one of these colossal bosses, but at the end of the day, they're pretty easy to figure out if you try it a few times. If you just don't have enough damage or you don't have your builds right, you're just never going to be able to beat these. The mechanics themselves aren't that hard. The biggest issues are survivability, damage, you don't know where the weak points are, Things like that can be fixed, and hopefully this helps you guys out. I'll see you guys in the next one. Hey, nothing but skills is out.